Many of you may be struggling with the stay-at-home orders, the isolation, particularly if you're an extrovert. Maybe it's been hard for you to be at home alone much of the time. I wanna tell you today that God cares about you, even the practical things of your life, even the daily things of your life. Some of us, when we think of God, we think of uh, grandiose uh, ideas and concepts about who he is and what he's doing on the earth today. But he's so specific, he cares, the number, cares about the number of hairs on your head. He cares about how many sparrows fall to the ground. He cares about you. As 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23 tells us that he cares about you wholly, H-O-L-Y, that you'd be a holiness of your life. But then he also cares about the, you whole, W-H-O-L-E, that means completely, holistically, fully, every aspect of your life, spirit, soul, and body. One of the ways I look at my life on a regular basis is what I call the eight Fs. They are my faith, my family, my friends, my food, my fitness, my fun, my future, my, my finances. These are eight areas of my life that I believe God wants me to look at and that he wants to sanctify each of those areas, areas wholly. Now let's take fun just as an example. Uh, he wants to sanctify your fun. He doesn't want it to be crass or crude fun. He wants it to be joyful. Uh, if you take a night and you're binge watching something, he wants to make sure that it's fun and joyful to you, not something that would be uh, off-putting to his, his nature of food. He's wanting you to take this time and make sure that we're eating as best we possibly can so that we um, keep, keep our um, body strong, um, keep our defenses up. And so each of these areas are something to, to look at, and not a one of them is something that God is outside of his realm of interest. Some of us think only the first F of these eight Fs is what he's important to him, uh, our faith, that we stay strong in faith. Well, when we stay strong in our faith, it affects all those other seven areas, our family. And this is a time where we can be close to our family. Maybe you have to do it through uh, uh, your, your telephone or through FaceTiming. Uh, that, I'm doing that with my grandkids, and it's been amazing when you see my kids laugh and, and my grandkids, excuse me, laugh and smile and tell me things that they're learning and seeing. Uh, family's important, friends, staying in contact with your friends, uh, even if, again, being over phone, email, texting them. I've just got off uh, probably like five super long conversations today, lasting anywhere from a half hour to an hour each, uh, getting in depth on how some of these relationships in my life are doing, staying in cl close contact with my wife and making sure we're not just two entities um, kind of walking by each other without really connecting. And I know that's super important to my wife who's holding the camera right now. Is she shaking her head? Yes, she is. And she's smiling at me. Uh, our finances. This is a tough time for some in fi our finances. Maybe you've lost your job. And I want you to know, First Thessalonians tells us that, he, that he's going to sanctify that area. In other words, he's going to make that holy. You can trust him for your finances as much as you can for your faith or for your family fitness. This is one I like a lot myself is uh, staying mobile, moving a little bit, making sure that you're not um, uh, so dormant that your body begins to um, uh, seize up a little bit and lose its mobility. It's important that you get up and walk around every day. If you have some stairs in your house, go up and down the stairs several times. If you have a um, to do push-ups, whatever it is, just to keep moving a little bit, keep your fitness going, food, the way you eat, fun. And last but not least, your future. That's the eight of the, the eighth of the eight Fs that I have. And our, our future, our, our view of the future has changed somewhat for many people over these past few weeks. Uh, myself as well, included in this, that um, I think there was a, a sense in me and probably in a lot of even younger people that sort of we're immortal here on earth, that we're gonna live forever, that we're always gonna be in good health, that nothing can touch us. This thing has certainly impacted that uh, worldview and that philosophy. I think we're much more realizing the scripture is true that when it calls us a blade of grass, we grow up in the morning and we wither away at night, revealing to us the shortness of life. What is God's result of that when we think about our future is to redeem the time, make the best use of the time. Pray, read your Bible, talk to people, uh, get on the phone, share things, uh, uh, sing hymns together uh, with your spouse if you're or if you're home alone, just get a, a video out of some songs and begin to sing and worship with the redeeming the time. Uh, God holds your future in his hands. You will not perish a day before he is designed and not a day after. He knows the design, uh, your design time of birth and the design time of finish. So you can trust God. Going back to the first F of the eights, your faith. Your faith is rooted in the faithfulness of God, that God is faithful. And because he's faithful, you can trust him and live out these eight Fs. Every day that you're 
alive on this earth, these ADEFs will be full of impact, full of vitality, full of energy, full of encouragement, full, full of uh, a thrilling expectation of all that God's going to do to sanctify, to make holy, to make full, to make complete everything in your life. You don't need to be in discouragement or despair. You don't need to be waiting on your calendar to, to when this uh, thing is going to lift, when the um, the stay-at-home orders are going to lift. Even, even if you're in a situation where you need to stay at home, you can do great and amazing things during this time. God is with you. God is for you. Stay encouraged. God bless you.